David Harker was born on the 27th of November, 1957. He was brought up in Chesterley Street, in Durham, England. Harker lived with his parents Jacqueline and Alan, and his younger brother, Stephen. Harker had a turbulent childhood, with frequent arguments in the home, and from a young age, David would display worrying behavior and was known to torture and mutilate small creatures. According to psychologist J. M. MacDonald, the tendency to abuse animals and indulge in animal cruelty is considered to be one of the three adolescent behaviors of the homicidal triad. Homicidal, or the MacDonald triad as it is also called, refers to a set of three factors. These factors are persistent bedwetting, cruelty to animals, and obsession with setting fires. It is suggested that if a combination of two or more traits is present in a child, his or her actions can be linked to violent behaviors in later life. The homicidal triad mainly aims to link these characteristics with homicidal and sexually predatory behavior. With that in mind, at 16, David was sent to Deerbolt Young Offenders Institution at Barnard Castle, County Durham, for attacking two men and their dog. The dog later died. Despite this, once released from Deerbolt, Harker still managed to appear popular and maintain a circle of friends both wide and varied. He befriended a number of boys younger than him aged between 15 and 17, likely targeted as they were easier to impress, lie to, and control. Many of the boys feared him. At Stanhope Park in Darlington, Harker would sit on a bench while the youngsters, often as many as 15 of them at a time, sat on the grass around him in a semicircle, like they were his disciples. Harker was also a lead singer in a hardcore punk band named Downfall. He had the words subhuman and disorder tattooed across his scalp. Yet many of his friends described him as an intelligent guy and good fun to be around. His friends also say that Harker had a caring side. One friend explained one of the reasons he liked him was because he hated bigoted people, like racists. He said he would always stick up for people who could not help their own situation. He couldn't stand sex offenders and people who were horrible to children. Another friend said that Harker was planning to travel to India to do charity work and at one point was even organizing a charity concert. However, no such trip or charity event would ever take place. After Harker split up with his partner, who was also the mother of his son, aged four, he became depressed and ended up sleeping rough. He would spend time at Darlington YMCA and sleeping on friends' couches. It was soon after this that David Harker would meet Julie Patterson. Julie Patterson was a 31-year-old mother of four, who had just lost a custody battle with her ex-partner Freddie, and lost access to her children. Julie was battling depression and addiction to alcohol and Valium. Her boyfriend at the time, named Alan Taylor, said that Julie would often disappear for days with no explanation. In April 1998, Julie went drinking at a local bar. There, she met Harker, and the two became close. At the end of the night, Julie went back to Harker's flat at Harewood Grove, where they got intimate. Afterwards, for unknown reasons, something snapped in Harker. He picked up Julie's tights and strangled her to death with them. Harker then continued his sexual acts with Julie's corpse. He dragged her body downstairs to the basement and cut her up. He took pieces of her thigh and cooked them with pasta, garlic, and cheese. He continued this for the next two weeks until the body began to smell. Harker then disposed of it. When Julie missed an important appointment to see her children, her partner Alan contacted the police. Newspaper reports were released about Julie's disappearance. Some of Harker's drinking friends saw the newspaper with Patterson's case and gave Harker's name to the police, as he had bragged about Julie's death to them. One friend recalls him saying, He boasted about how he chopped up Julie. Obviously he was drunk, so I just passed it off and didn't believe him. Julie's torso was discovered in a waste bag in a hedge at the end of a garden. We could clearly see on top of the sack the shoulder blades of a human being, said Detective Inspector Ian Phillips. The owner of the house told police officer, David Davies, that two boys threw the bag over the hedge, saying that it was a dead dog. When the body was taken for testing, it was found to be the torso of Julie Patterson. Harker's barren house was then searched, and police immediately knew that Harker was responsible. The apartment was covered in blood and still had Julie's belongings there. 
David Harker was arrested for Julie's murder at a bail hostel, where he was being held for a separate crime. Upon questioning, Harker denied committing the crime, but later confessed. Harker, however, refused to reveal where Julie's head and limbs were buried. This prompted a huge police operation, and the entire town was searched for her remains. Officers spent weeks searching a landfill site meticulously, before the search was finally called off. Meanwhile, Harker was being assessed by mental health professionals, and he was diagnosed as having all the criteria of a psychopathic killer who felt no remorse for his crime. Harker also claimed to have killed two more people and admitted to committing acts of necrophilia and cannibalism on Julie's body. In February 1999, Harker was put on trial. His psychiatric results were shown to the judge. The psychiatrist told the judge that Harker had multiple unknown mental disorders and putting him in a mental hospital would be a waste of time, as he was just plain evil. Harker pled guilty and was sentenced on the grounds of manslaughter. He was sentenced to just 14 years, with a chance of parole once the 14 years had been served. David Harker cruelly refused to reveal the whereabouts of the rest of Julie's body, including her head, arms, and legs. Freddie Newman, Julie's ex-partner, wrote to Harker in an attempt to find the rest of Julie's body. Harker taunted Newman in his disturbing letter back to him, and in an evil twist, taunted him with a riddle indicating where Julie's head and limbs could be found. Julie's brother, Michael, was tormented by the riddle. He initially believed that he had solved it and spent weeks digging at an area called the Cat's Well in Durham, but found nothing. Michael recently stated, I looked at that riddle in my scrapbook for the first time in twenty years and I had a mental breakdown. I was in hospital for a month. Julie's daughter, Sophie, who was seven at the time, was told her mother died of cancer. Her foster mother told her not to turn on the news but she did, which led to her finding out about her mother's true cause of death. Julie's then-boyfriend, Alan Taylor, did not take Julie's death very well. In 1999, a man by the name of John Morrison was found strangled in his home. Alan Taylor was arrested on suspicion of the murder. He confessed that he wanted to commit a crime on the same level as Julie's murder, so that he would get put in the same jail as Harker. The plan failed and Taylor was sentenced to life at a different prison. Taylor then took his own life three months into his sentence. Freddie Newman, Julie's ex-partner who wrote to Harker, took his own life eight years later. It is believed it was partially caused by the events around Julie's death. Since the initial crime, Harker has stated that he harbored disturbing fantasies and professed his desire to become Britain's youngest serial killer. Harker is still in jail to this day. The riddle Harker wrote read, I have a bank but have no money. I have falls and keep on going. I have a bed but do not sleep. I have a mouth but do not feed. What am I? Do you know where it is? Where do you think the riddle may be pointing to? Drop your ideas in the comments. And, if you enjoyed this video then don't forget to like and subscribe for more content just like this. And hit the bell icon and we'll let you know every time we upload a new video. Thanks for watching.